much this weekend, Well, and so, um, you know, making wholesale changes or something like that is the furthest thing that we need to do for um, the simple reason that we didn't see any of that kind of stuff in any of our several weeks of scrimmage games leading up to the season. So um, why did we see that on opening weekend are questions that we are answering as a staff and we'll be addressing this week uh, through our preparation. And, you know, bottom line is, is not shying away from the facts, but looking at the facts, whether it's a lack of strikes or lack of quality strikes or a lack of consistent contact, lack of consistent scoring, whatever it may be, um, you know, those were real things that showed up on game day, and we need to address the whys. I know it was kind of lost in everything that happened on Monday, but what did you think of Brandenburg's debut? Well, it was okay. It was yeah. still uh, very underwhelming compared to what he's shown us. Um, you know, other than probably uh, Christian Schifatelli's uh, first inning when he went out there and just absolutely uh, filled it up with the intent that we expect to see our, our pitchers and players have when they're going about their work. Um, other than the fact that you saw uh, Myers' third, fourth, and fifth innings were absolutely electric and he was unhittable. Um, you know, you didn't really see much else that you could really point to and say from a pitching side, yeah, that's the standard that's been here. That's the standard that we've seen in all of our prep work and scrimmages. Um, and so for that point, you know, we'll look at the positives. But still, yeah, we're going to look at all the facts and address the things and the weaknesses that we had, which were many. And We'll get those right for this coming weekend. Do you have a rotation for this weekend, same as last week? Yeah, it'll be the same rotation as last week. Thanks. What are some of those things you see from St. John's for this weekend? Was? Well, I mean, St. John's, it, and to be honest with you, whether it's St. John's or San Diego or even the following weekend with Santa Barbara or once we get in Pac-12 play, I, I'm not too sure that it really has much to do with an opponent. You know, I don't, I don't know that, uh, you know, for me, uh, it's not so much of somebody just beating you. It's, it's really when you're beating yourself. Um, and the reasons for why you're doing that. St. John's, they've got power arms. They've got uh, some guys that are physical, uh, size-wise and stuff like that, that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, you know, they're going to start a righty and two lefties, and then the fourth game's a TBA for them. Um, they've got a power guy out of the bullpen that's got a good breaking ball, and he's got a strong arm. And so, you know, they're going to have talent just like anybody else. Our focus isn't really going to be too much on our opponent. It's going to be more upon, upon ourselves and handling the things that we need to handle internally. Coach, I know going one and three isn't exactly ideal, but what are some of the positives that you took away from this first opening weekend? Well, one of the positives is the way we finished. You know, the the guys, uh, you know, just take it for example when you're when you're struggling, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the game you're still losing, you're still struggling, you're not playing well. For them to have the character to be able to come back and do what they did at the end of the fourth game was tremendous. That's a huge building block. That's a huge positive. And especially when you look around on the field and you say, all right, well, from the pitching side of it, you know, Adam Myers getting the ball on Friday night, never pitched in a college Division I baseball game. Okay. I've never done that. You know, um, you can go to the flip side and say, well, Col Colby Summers has, and maybe he should have performed better. Uh, yeah, and I think there's a lot of us that could say, well, I've coached in a lot of Division I games, and I've played in a lot of Division I games, and I didn't, I didn't coach very well. And so, you know, there's a lot of blame to pass around for sure. Um, but for me, I look at it and I say, well, wow, what are the positives? Well, there were many positives, especially at the end of that last ball game. There was a ton of energy that we had. In order to score 12 runs in an inning, to be able to break records and do that kind of stuff, it's really tremendous in terms of the individual and team efforts that came together there. And so we need to build off of those positives uh, and take those into the work week that we have leading up to St. John's this week. How are you approaching the catcher position? Obviously, Cromwick had that big grand slam, but you still scale in and the guys like Arrows waiting to wait. So. Yeah, our catching, we, we've got good young talent there. We've got good depth there. We, you know, uh, a lot of that has to do with who is healthy and who's not healthy. Uh, Josiah Cromwick didn't play a lot last year, not because he wasn't a really good player, but because he wasn't healthy. Um, you know, you saw this weekend, boy, he had a huge grand slam. Uh, he had equally as good of at bats on other at bats that he had, too, where he blistered a ball into right field for an RBI single, which was great. I think that was a, uh, in his five RBI performance when he was two for two on the final game of that day. Uh, of the series, I mean. But uh, Joe's a really good player. Anson's a really good player. We saw Bennett Thompson get in there and catch the final out of the victory in the in the fourth game. He's a really good player from Medford. So um, a lot of that kind of stuff just depends on who is healthy. And specifically, I didn't think we caught the ball very well this weekend. And so, you know, when we look at, okay, well, where are all the lockdown positions and stuff like that, we expect to see much better out of our guys because they've shown us that. 
not because we're hoping, but because they've shown us that in the past. And when you guys see that in the past, and we all see that in the past, we have a standard that we expect to be seen. We didn't meet that standard this weekend, and that, that lands strictly on my shoulders. What are the one or two attributes you value the most at the catcher position? I'm sorry? What are the one or two attributes you value the most at the catcher position? I mean, what are the tie-breaking elements there? Being ahead of the game. Leading the pitching staff. Those would be the first two. And just really, as the only player on the field that sees the whole field on every play, um, acting in that manner. You know, to where when you see the entire field and you're the only player on the field that can see each position on the field, well, you should act in that way that says, wow, I've got a pretty good handle on this game. It's going slow. I'm ahead of it. Um, and those are things that I didn't think uh, we did consistently well this past weekend. Now, we did it in parts, and when we did it in parts, boy, it was spectacular. Uh, there were a couple of times when, when Jack Scanlon threw uh, one specific time when he threw a runner out uh, trying to advance on a ball in the dirt that totally changed the momentum of an, of an inning around. And yet we saw too many times on the converse side of that where we were unable to throw a guy out trying to advance on a ball in the dirt, which led to a bigger inning uh, instead of maybe ending an inning. And so just being ahead of it at the catching position and the leadership aspect are the two biggest things for me. How much, we, that's not about this, Wise, how much discretion do you give your catchers in terms of the pitch calling? How much of that is Jake or you, or how much of that is Jack or Josiah? Or no, Jake Injure runs the pitching staff. You know, uh, he has discussions with the pitchers and the catchers constantly throughout the game and so he's getting their feedback on what they're seeing what's feeling good out of the hand for a pitcher what the catcher feels like the umpire is going to be able to give them or not give them for balls and strikes behind the dish there's a lot of elements but Jake trusts our players and so do I with uh, coach Angier and he runs the game through the catcher and the catcher ultimately the pitcher has the final say in what pitch gets thrown uh, but we use the input of uh, the players as, as well. In terms of the play at the plate, it seemed like some of the newcomers had the most productive weekend and some of the returners didn't have as much success. What did you like from some of the newcomers and what do the returning players need to work on? Uh, that's a great question. Well, um, Brandon Malone, start with him. You know, he is basically coming off of a couple of years at South Carolina where he didn't have any success. He showed up on first weekend and was a huge, huge threat. Now, Jacob Walsh is a freshman. He's getting intentionally walked. I don't know how many freshmen in the country are getting intentionally walked in their first college week uh, to get to Josh Kasovich, who was second in the team, I think, in RBIs last year. Um, you know, that's tremendous. For Drew Callie to come up, I felt like he was the single greatest reason why we did what we did on the final game of the series when he specifically uh, stuck an opposite field two-strike double. I thought that was a monstrous at-bat just to show the unselfishness to go with the pitch and to adjust to the pitch and do the things that opposite field with two strikes is required. Uh, he also hit a big time home run. He made good plays at third and he just provided some real stability. I thought that was awesome, you know, and we knew that he was a great player coming in here and he showed it this weekend. Um, there were other great performances that we saw specifically on Sunday as well, but uh, Colby Shade, I thought, swung the bat overall very well on the weekend. Um, amongst others, there were some guys that swung the bat. I don't think it was an issue where, you know, when you leave the weekend hitting over 300 on a weekend, Granted, there was one big lopsided inning in there, uh, but you could say the same thing for the other side because there were really just a couple of innings that got away from us on the weekend that we need to address. And then in terms of the returners, how do they get locked in as the season moves forward and continue to have that production that they did last season? You know, you got a bunch of returners that are probably trying a little bit too hard, right? You lost three critical offensive pieces from a year ago. That's not, you know, just guessing. That's a fact. And so a lot of these returners are probably saying, Boy, you know, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. Instead of saying I get to do this, you know, this is my time. I can relax, and I'm I'm a good player. Um, and so, not necessarily about uh, making up new drills and doing a bunch of new stuff, but maybe more or less letting the guys know that we do care about them. We do love them. Uh, we do understand that, man. Maybe uh, they weren't trying to not have great weekends with the bat for some of them that didn't. Um, and just showing them some understanding as well as being with them during their work this week. How do you try to balance was like Levitsky and Grant are probably bad in the bottom third most all their career. With that, obviously Tanner's a very nice guy to be protected. But do you have any thought process in terms of do you try to experiment with well if you put them in the two, you extend the order, you might give them a little bit even more protection from a power standpoint or something, or is it just yeah, it's, it's gonna kind of be until you prove otherwise? No, I think we have plenty of bats in the lineup, uh, and when we get going, I think it's a really scary look. Um, I think we saw that clearly at the end of the fourth game where, 
you know, all the way through from the fifth inning on. I mean, it was sustained offense, and man, it could have any one of those innings could have been a six, a seven, or an eight run inning like we saw the 12 and the eighth inning uh, there on game four. So uh, we've got a lot of good hitters in this program. Coach Martyrs developed a lot of good hitters in this program. Um, and I, I don't think scoring runs is going to be a big bugaboo for this group this year as long as they're on their own side and they're relaxed and they're just performing like they know they can. Well, as we saw San Diego use an earpiece to transmit the signals, we've seen Vanderbilt this year use some sort of wristwatch technology. I'm wondering if you guys have implemented that or are you guys still just doing the normal signals from the dugout? Um, no, we've got a couple of different systems. We use that same earpiece as well. It's pretty standard throughout college baseball. I think it's been a a speed up the game type of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not bulletproof. Sometimes technologies go out and you know when there's actually people in the stands, which was kind of nice this last weekend. There was, for the first time, there was an opposing crowd. We didn't have that last year. You know, we didn't have that at home. We didn't have that on the road until the very end, tail end of last year. And what a difference that was to be able to get a chance to be able to play in front of people. Well, sometimes those technologies, you can't hear what's going on, right. even when there's a thousand people screaming in the stands and stuff like that. Uh, maybe it's hard to hear in that ear. So you've got to be able to have other uh, ways to get pitches in and things to your players and stuff. We didn't have any issues with communication this weekend, which was good. good. Coach, going off that, how excited are you, the guys, to come back to PK, first time you're playing at home since June, and you have the brand new turf, everything. I just guess, what's the mindset of being at home once again? Uh, we love playing at home. We love playing at home. I mean, I mean, it starts with me when I'm a I'm a football fan, you know, and I love watching Duck football and being in Autzen Stadium. It starts there, you know, and it's the energy, it's the passion of the fans, it's what our football team has established for the, throughout the years. Our track and field program with the excellence and how crazy that is, and the energy that you get when you go over to Haywood Field. Same thing goes with PK Park. You know, our guys are they're jacked to play at home. That's why we got 35 home games on a schedule. We can't wait to get out there and and see thousands of people rocking that place, making it a challenge for the opposing teams. You know, and so for us, um, yeah, there are nice ballpark uh, improvements and stuff like that that have been done. I think the fans are going to love it. And really the, the objective, other than the fact that, yeah, the place looks great, it's about putting a product out there that the fans are going to say, yeah, I want to come and spend some money and come to watch these guys play. That's on the coaches' uh, back, you know, and specifically my shoulders. And I look forward to that opportunity to get these guys ready to play. We didn't do a great job of doing that this past weekend, and I expect to see a great um, a great response out of our group this week. Have you been able to have any sit-down combos with Dan Lanning since he, uh, since he got here? Absolutely. I've talked with Coach Lanning quite a bit. He's a great guy. He and his staff. That's an energetic group that's passionate. They, uh, they've got a real plan. There's a ton of energy. Um, but that's not to hate on Coach Cristobal or anybody like that. I mean, shoot, I've, uh, I just love the passion and the energy that the University of Oregon Athletics programs of all, all of them bring. You know, Coach Graves, Altman, all the way down. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's a great place to be. It's hardly a place where they call it going to work. It's, it's fun to be here every day. Good. Good. Thanks, Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Okay. Have a great day. See you guys.